Monica has just moved to New York City. Living at the other end of the G-Line from me, she comes over for lunch. Soft boiled eggs with yuzu koshu, sautéed greens, and other accoutrements over rice. As is perhaps customary, we both giggle and slightly squeal upon greeting, having not seen each other since her moving here. We sit in my kitchen, yellow tulips starting their slow bow toward wilting, and we chat at hyperspeed for at least an hour before I remember to press record that we are meant to be doing an interview. That was Bobby Menuez, writer, artist, and actor, reading their introduction for a conversation they had with Monica Mogi in issue six. I will now be reading the conversation they had. I will refer to Bobby Menuez as BM and Monica Mogi as MM. BM. Okay, this is happening. You were telling me about going to Azerbaijan with Kiko Mizuhara. MM. Yes, yes. It was five days in the Gobustan Desert, and there was no cell service where we were. It really hit the refresh button, just not being connected to anything in that way. Being in the middle of that desert, there were all these amazing petroglyphs we got to see, 20,000-year-old cave carvings near the Caspian Sea. Everything felt so ancient there. It just felt like, whoa, this is the world. The world is so big. BM. I know what you mean, and it relates you to time differently, too. MM. Yeah, and it made me sad to think, whoa, I'm really shutting myself off most of the time. Because being in that environment, and especially in the desert, you literally watch the sun rise and fall. BM. So you're really synced up. MM. Yeah, you see your day in the sky. You're not even really looking at the time like on your watch. You just see, oh, the sun is going down soon. BM, you're just having an embodied experience of time rather than a more conceptual one. MM, yeah, actually thinking about it now, I've had my most psychedelic experiences in deserts. Something about the way you see the sky changing all around you, especially when it becomes dark and it's just endlessly expansive, and you're like, whoa, you're in space, but it's always there. BM. It's true, it's always there. You're always just floating in space. They laugh. But you just don't think about it, because you don't have to when you're in a box. MM. It makes you sad when you're in the box. You don't even see the sunlight sometimes. BM. I think about that a lot as someone like you, who has almost always lived in big cities, how we so rarely get to see an uninterrupted horizon line. And then, whenever I do, it's like a full body experience. It's actually making me think about those pictures you took of Kiko, where it's sunset, but then you have the flash. MM. Oh, the one I just posted. BM. Yeah. MM. That was just Unif, me, Christine, and Kiko. We were on our way to the Madonna Inn and we just stopped on the side of the road because the sky was nice and then I just had the light panel. BM. I love those so much. What did you shoot that on? MM. I shot the video on my iPhone. She laughs. The new one has such a good camera, it's crazy. You can literally make a movie. And it makes it so easy to do something like that shoot just completely impromptu. It's so light and doesn't shake. You see in the video how I am just pushing it through the grass. I like using my phone more than a Canon Mark whatever. BM. Mark whatever. MM. Laughs. Mark 4? 5? BM. Laughs. But it really looks so good. And especially if you know the context for the images will be on a screen already, why not let it stay in that digital realm? I know you shoot a lot on film, too, though. MM. It's true. It's weird because, yeah, I love shooting on film a lot, too, but I have rarely seen a photo of mine from negative to print in a totally analog way. And when I'm shooting on 16mm, too, the movie footage, I've never played it on a fucking projector. I'd love to see the real deal, you know, of what it actually looks like. 
I'm just seeing the digitized version of it. But really, when I'm shooting, I much prefer film. I like not being able to shoot forever. I love the limitations of the format. For example, if I'm shooting something with an editor, they don't have the same access to start editing what I'm doing on the spot as they do if I'm shooting digital. BM. It changes the creative process. MM. Yeah, I feel more confident just going in without knowing exactly what's happening. I feel much better. BM. What do you feel like makes photos good? Or rather, how do you know when it's what you want it to be? I know a lot of your process is more following a feeling, but sometimes you do have a more specific vision ahead of time for what you're going to make. Could you talk a bit about that? MM. There are a bunch of projects I have that are planned out, kind of, but usually I'm just going with the flow. It's more about creating a certain world which the pictures can emerge from. BM. I see you really cultivating your own creative intuition and way of looking at the world, opening yourself to seeing what could be a photograph in any moment or something. MM. Yeah, that's way more fun for me. BM. I would love to hear more about your position as creative director of Office Kiko and how you became friends with Kiko in the first place. Kiko is really facilitating a big perspective opening in Japan. I mean all over the world. Even though she is mainstream, she is doing radical things from within her position. And I think of you as a key person in her image making. So I see you doing this cultural shifting work together, really. MM. Okay, well, we first met almost seven years ago. I was shooting her for the cover of Nylon Japan. And right away we clicked and it felt like we were both craving the same thing that was missing. I don't know, I'm trying to think. What is it about Kiko? It's weird because sometimes you forget that she's a famous person or something. BM. I know, every time I hang out with her. MM. So to talk about her. BM. It's just a friend. You're like, wait. MM. Yeah. BM. That billboard behind you is also you. But as a friend, she really just is so present. MM. Yeah, honestly, me and Kiko, we definitely have a soulmate bond. BM, I feel that. MM, yeah, we've had really similar childhoods in a way, both raised by single moms. There was immediately a lot we could relate over. I feel like we're both really grateful for everything we have now in a specific way. It's kind of like real recognize real. It feels really good to be able to trust someone 100% knowing that we're always on the same page. BM. You seem to have a psychic bond. You don't have to use verbal communication when you hang out or when you're working together, and that's rare. MM. And Kiko just genuinely has really good taste and a specific vision for herself. She's not just doing what she's told. She's one of very few celebrities that quit a huge agency to start their own company, which is a huge risk. That's what OK is. Office Kiko, it's her own company. BM, boss bitch. MM, yeah, exactly. I think the way she really fights for our creativity has definitely paved the way for us to bring our flavor into whatever mainstream arena. That's so important because if you just let people dictate what your image is going to look like, I mean, BM. It will look like everyone else's. MM. And Kiko has a lot of other brand relationships and sides to what she does. But with OK, we're just doing our own thing. It's really exciting for me as creative director that I kind of get to be in control of how things look all the way from start to finish. I can really pour everything into it because the final product is up to us. It's not just handed off to someone. BM. I feel like it makes so much sense for you to have a creative director position in the bigger picture of your creative life or something. Because even though you make pictures primarily, you're also always building a whole world for the work to emerge from and exist in. I always feel like there is a narrative element to your pictures. MM. Thanks. She laughs. BM. 
I experience it that way. And it's special how your work isn't just limited to being in print or whatever. It's like maybe some pictures you make will become stickers. Maybe a video you make will then be on a mushroom-shaped TV in Shibuya. Which is a really different way to be contextualizing and getting your transmission, your image, your content to an audience. And in a way, I think it's less insular than if it was just within a fashion context or just within a limited commercial context. MM. I also feel so much more creative when I'm behind OK instead of behind Monica Mogi. I can just really get work going faster because I'm not thinking about it being under my name. I'm okay with being this person behind the scenes. I don't need it to be my show. BM. Do you feel like making work under the OK name frees you a bit from having to worry about your ego getting in the way of your creative process? MM. I mean, from what I see, yeah. For me, it's just easier to keep working. I just like seeing things exist out there. Like the mushroom TV. It's just out there for someone to walk by and be like, what the fuck is this? I think I really like being anonymous in that way. BM. Is there anything on the horizon you want to talk about? MM. I recently really love making my photos into an installation piece, like the light boxes I made with positive film. I have also tried experimenting with casting positive film into resin objects, like a paperweight or ashtray, which I hope to sell as art pieces. For Dizzy, I decided to create a collage of snack and love hotel signs I have collected over the years. Names like Milky Way, Miss You, Memory, and Scandal are so romantic. It instantly makes you feel nostalgic of a dalliance or feeling the love blues. I am really obsessed with stumbling upon these signs. All of the artwork in this piece are courtesy of the artist. The first page illustration and title text is by Bobby Menuez and the introduction and interview translation is by Miri Matsufuji. On the first page, Bobby has drawn Monica's face. It sits sideways on the page. Monica's eyes have a twinkle in them. Her whole head isn't drawn, but rather just her eyebrows, eyes, nose, mouth, a strand of hair, and a contour of her cheek. At the top of the page, Bobby has drawn the title text, which reads Monica across in spiky lettering, Mogi going down from the M, and then underneath Monica, it says in convo with Bobby and a drawing of a starburst. On the next page is a collage by Monica titled Collection of My Favorite Signs from 2020. As she mentioned at the end of the interview, it is different snack bar and love hotel signs, including Miss You, Live House Love, Sexy, Milky Way, Sour. Some of them are blue typed, some of them are yellow, there's a pink heart, and many of them also have Japanese text. The next piece is titled Ropongi Collage from 2020, and it is also mixed media. Again, there are what look like Love Hotel signs, a strip going down the right side, a resin piece on the bottom and in the center with negative films cast into them, and a blue heart. The next spread has on the left side Ayo Champ from 2019, and on the right side Kiko Office Kiko Kiaru Love. They are both up close photos of girls, monotone. The one on the left side is bluish purple, and on the right is black with a gradient orange to purple text at the top. On the next page is a piece titled Pink Positive Film Layout with Handmade Resin Ashtray 2020. The title is pretty descriptive of the piece itself. It is five strips of colorful film showing portraits of girls as well as some photos of signs 
of Love Hotels, and in front of the negative scans is a pink resin ashtray. On the next page is Office Kiko and Esperanza shoot featuring Kaoru Watanabe, Chinami Ishigaki, Kiko Mizuhara, Eli Chimp Palm from 2019. In the center is a photo of two of the women. On the top left is Kiko in three consecutive poses. Office Kiko is written below and OK is written to the right in yellow bubble letters. There's three photos on the bottom of the girls as well. One of them is in black and white. They're looking and posing towards the camera in each of them, sometimes holding up peace signs. In the bottom center photo, they are standing in front of the Shibuya 109 building. On the next page is Monica's mushroom TV installation for Office Kiko from 2018. There are six different colored mushroom sculptures with monitors inserted into the tops of the mushrooms. On the last page is Blue Crescent from 2018, positive film light box. In the light box are strips of negatives. They are also of women putting on lipstick, looking at the camera, skies. All of them have a lot of blue tones in them. The light box is over a piece of loose leaf paper with some writing in pencil.